Thanks for joining me on this next section of Kindle Income System. We're talking about formatting 101, the foundation of your book. Even if you don't have an iPad, it's not a big deal, or a Kindle. So what? Kindle books are read easily, easily on a variety of platform, platforms. The Kindle Reader for Desktop is free on Amazon's website. You can download that. Adobe Digital Editions, this is also free, and this is a great way to read not only Kindle books, but also books that have been formatted on other electronic platforms. And the iPad, of course, uh, reads Kindle books and has its own iBooks feature to it. Don't make formatting difficult. In this video, which is a little bit longer than the previous, we'll talk about font, paragraph format, the title page layout, and also the clickable table of contents. The Kindle Previewer is free. You can download this for both Windows and PC platform as well as Mac. And so it's free. Make sure to download it. This is an essential element to previewing your work before you upload it for the final time to Amazon. It's a great way to simply test how your book looks. It's free. One point to make here is don't forget about black and white. Not all e-readers are in color. The older edition Kindles are in black and white and grayscale. And so if your images have very subtle shades of colors that are closely uh, matched or closely together, you may lose a lot of detail on that. And so don't forget about the black and white readers out there. WebSafe fonts, this is pretty easy to uh, find anywhere. Just Google it. MS Word also has a drop down box in the font section that'll tell you based on the version of MS Word that you're using what the most WebSafe fonts are. Times is pretty boring. Arial is fine. Helvetica I like. Garamond or Garamond is, is not bad. Georgia I like as well. I caution you about script or unusual characters. Amazon's getting better all the time, but handwriting and script and unusual characters, sometimes when they are uploaded and converted into the Kindle format, which is a Mobi file, uh, some of the detail, some of the clarity, or the formatting is altogether wiped out. So if there's a particular symbol or script that you think is essential for your readers to have, suggest taking a JPEG, and we'll talk about that later in the tool section and some of the free tools and how to do that easily. And it's not by taking full screenshots. It's much simpler than that. Handwriting, uh, I suggest using a JPEG of the particular handwriting or image that you want to include. MS Word has a font called Dakota, which is a, a type of handwriting that actually converts fairly well in some of the recent things that we've published. It doesn't put it up as script that turns it into the standard um, block text format of, of times or Arial or whatever you're using. Table and graphs, again this is hit and miss. Uh, we've seen it work both ways. If you have a table or graph, uh, a good way to do this would be to take a, to make it into a JPEG. That way you can preview and make sure the quality is, is there, that the uh, X and Y values are readable and that your readers are getting what they need to get out of your particular table or graph. There's a great white website called Wolfram Alpha. They can produce some amazing graphs. Uh, so if you're looking for something more exciting and different than just the MS Word that everybody else uses or Excel or whatever uh, platform you use, check that out. In this video, we'll talk about three simple ways to format your book, and then I'll give you some options to outsource it. So using a text editor is fine. Kindle accepts rich text format RTF as an acceptable uploadable file type. It's simple. There's really no formatting or very minimal formatting involved. There's not the annoying autocorrections that MS Word often inserts. And for simple short books or nonfiction, nonfiction books without a lot of uh, graphs, it's, it's fairly straightforward and less errors. That's one way to do it. Write the entire book in the text editor. Save it as rich, rich text format, which is .rtf, and upload it to Amazon KDP. MS Word, uh, this is what I like, this is what most of my partners like. Uh, it's simple, it's easy to use. I suggest turning off the auto format feature. Uh, it can avoid some of the funky formatting things that happen when MS uh, formats your document. As you can see, here's an example of a poorly pixelated image, and we'll talk about image quality later on. I did this on purpose so we could talk a little bit more about the issues that happen when you drag and drop versus upload, and also uh, compression versus non-compression. I suggest centering your images and also inserting them uh, with the insert drop down menu versus drag and drop. Uh, I published a book uh, and used a combination of insert and drag and drop. Previewed the first part of the book but didn't go through the whole book because it was fairly lengthy. And then unfortunately had some uh, bad comments regarding um, missing images that were crucial to this particular niche. So keep that in mind. 
Centering your images, uh, this is also important uh, depending on how far you want to go with the platform of, of e-publishing or self-publishing. Print on demand, uh, depending on what company you use, whether it's Create Space or uh, Laboo or uh, Publish America, there's a variety of ones out there and they all have their own pros and cons and merits, but when you are taking your Kindle book and uploading it to their servers, sometimes the images will be chopped or cropped or they don't fit precisely on the, the exact layout of the pages. And so uh, the best case scenario would be that you would receive an error message and it would point you to the direction of what you need to correct. The worst case would be that half your image is cut off and just missing from your book, which readers will hate. Uh, fonts, we talked a little bit about website fonts, so keep that in mind. We'll talk more about that in the next section. This is an example of a formatting problem. This could be any particular page in a book or a title page, for example, and it looks fine. It, it gives you just the basics of what you need. We have an H1 tag there for some reason, and a few uh, things that just you can imagine as a title and information, and author, etc. And so it looks fine. One of the issues, though, is when you're uploading an, an MS Word document to Kindle, is it converts that into a different format. And so what you see here is not always what you get, and I'll talk about more of that on the next slide. So by clicking on up here, you can see the little red arrow there to the paragraph symbol. It'll take you back to the document and show you all the returns that you entered to create this particular page. It's getting better, but there's still problems. Amazon often will recognize a hard return as a page break. And so you can see that there is a variety of uh, instances on this page where hard breaks would be inserted and what that translates into is a blank page in your book and so imagine having 15 blank pages at the front of your book that's not going to generate any fan base or following or positive reviews for your book and so keep that in mind the difference between a hard and a soft return a hard return is when you just hit return or enter and that creates some particular formatting within the MS document which is subsequently converted on Kindle a soft return is done by using the shift and return button. And so you can create some space between different lines within your document, but you're not inserting hard breaks. And so it's a little less likely, I'm not saying zero chance, but very much less likely that you're going to have a blank page inserted through the conversion process on the KDP site. Hyperlinks, I'm sure you all know what hyperlinks are about. The issue here is more of a personal preference. If you want people to stay in your book versus taking them out of the book to your website, to your lead funnel, to a marketing generating site, to a uh, landing page or squeeze, squeeze page. Those are all options or certainly an email address as well. And so keep in mind that not all readers have back books. And so it can be frustrating when someone is, say, on chapter two of your book and you take them uh, through a link out of the book or to a a position within the book towards the end and they have no way to get back to where they were other than to go back to the beginning and scroll or scan uh, to see where they're at. Some readers will memorize the last page you're at but if you're taken to a hyperlink farther in the book it's probably going to remember that's the last place that the reader was at and it's frustrating if you if you don't have a, a clear idea of what page you were on or if you're reading a, a, um, a technical book or a nonfiction book and you're maybe jumping around a little bit in the book it's a little frustrating so that's a personal preference so you have to decide for yourself. Just an example of uh, the MS formatting. Make sure in the link to on the top arrow there that you include the full URL, the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash address. If you just type in, uh, for example, kin, Kindle Income System, it's not going to, to work. It'll be a broken link, which upsets people. Compressing images, this is a great way to save uh, time and space. Um, if you're using the 70% royalty option for KDP, uh, the size of your document, the size of your book has an impact on the delivery charge and it's it's usually not exorbitant but keep in mind that, that certain genres, particularly children's books, are very uh, image or photo laden and so compressing your image is one way to save a little bit of time while preserving quality so this is just a screenshot of that happening um, using the power of a Mac to do so. Title page, we talked a little bit about soft versus hard returns avoid extra returns because it can result in blank pages Turn off auto formatting, that's the best option to do in the preference section of MS Word. And center your images so they don't get cut. Wrap around text, what I mean by that is images with text wrapped around the sides of the particular image. It's important to test this for a number of reasons. Kindle uses reflowable text and what that means is the text will wrap around automatically depending on the orientation, size of the page, or the device. For example, if you're looking at 
an image in portrait view, like is depicted on the screen here, it flows the text and breaks the text in a certain format that's predetermined by a bunch of uh, computer code that you don't need to know about. If the device is rotated 90 degrees, it's now landscape, and that creates a completely different feel and flavor to the formatting. And so don't try and game the system. Don't try and guess uh, where Kindle is going to break your text and flow it to the next line because you'll often be wrong and it'll create some unusual formatting and ruin the effect you're trying to determine. So just make sure to test when you're wrapping text around images to see how it actually looks. Font size, there's certainly a number of options there. Um, 12 to 16 is generally what what uh, is recommended. Certainly you can go larger or smaller. Most of the readers have a magnification option there, but uh, most readers aren't too happy with their micro text where they're constantly adjusting the font size to be able to read what's going on. Red, green, blue, uh, these are easily viewed on black and white and grayscale. Readers, uh, not as dramatic or as exciting. Obviously, if you're in a photography niche or landscape niche, disregard this and just use the highest quality images that you feel necessary to convey to your readers what you're trying to show and share. The people who are looking at your particular work are most likely doing it on um, a high resolution device, a high resolution monitor, or iPad, or Kindle Fire, something like that. So the, the uh, RGB is not so, so crucial there. Uh, shadow versus emboss versus outline. Uh, play with these at your peril. Sometimes they work, sometimes they look uh, funky in formatting there. Um, it's hard to predict. Obviously, a variety of, of readers might have little nuances in how they display the formatting. Uh, the beauty of the uh, Kindle Previewer is you can certainly test how it looks on a variety of Kindle devices. Symbols, uh, this is getting better and better all the time. Um, some symbols work fine, others don't. If there's a particular symbol that is crucial that the exact um, format and font and structure and appearance is preserved, then just make it a JPEG, make it an image. So this might apply to someone who's writing a, a, a quantum physics formulas or calculus or some other uh, advanced or technical issue uh, going on there. So This is convention stuff, uh, nothing that I made up. It's fiction, go ahead and indent, nonfiction, um, no spacing. That's just convention there. Nonfiction doesn't have an indent, and you can go ahead and space out uh, the paragraphs. Um, Several of the, the uh, most successful writers promote short paragraphs for faster read reading, faster readability. I myself hate it when I'm reading on my desktop and I have uh, 20, 30 lines of text with no break in there. It's just sometimes a little hard to track where you're actually at. It leads to eye fatigue and a number of other things. So you'll have to decide for yourself uh, how long you want your paragraphs to be. General rule of thumb that I like to stick to is no more than four to five sentences in a particular paragraph. We talked about reflowable text. Do not use page numbers in Kindle formatting. The reason for this is reflowable. Different devices, different size. Obviously, the screen of an iPad is different than the screen of a small Kindle. If you reference page numbers in the body of your work, those page numbers not, may not exist. Uh, readers are going to be upset when you tell them to see page 50 or 80 and there is no page 80. Avoid columns. I've seen this work on occasion, but generally I think the formatting turns out less than desired. So avoid columns. Using heading tags, which are right on the top of your Word toolbar, are crucial. This makes creating the clickable table of contents a uh, snap. Uh, I feel sorry for anybody who's, who's spent a couple hundred dollars having their book formatted. The re reality of it is you can do all this for five bucks and I will show you how uh, in the later sections of these videos. And so um, this is an uh, uh, easy way to, to uh, uh, ch change the uh, appearance of your book, uh, give it some bold, uh, which is using the H1, H2, H3 tags. Guarantees that you'll have a, a differentiation between the text that works much better than highlighting text and clicking bold. Footnotes, footnotes are probably okay, um, but avoid headers and footers in general. The caveat to this is if you're planning on taking your Kindle book and changing it into a PDF, PDF and maybe marketing it on a different platform, using it as a handout or a bonus or something like that, then you, you might get away with headers or footers. Um, here's an example of a perfect image that would be better included as a JPEG image and not try to reproduce it in a, some other format. So images. Uh, obviously, there's some generalizations on this page here. Uh, if you need to compress it, that's fine. Generally, 250 kilobytes is considered full size. That's a little more expensive when you start adding up delivery costs with multiple full size images in a book. Pen and ink art is generally fine. Um, 800 tall and 600 wide, generally max. Uh, that can fluctuate a little bit. 
sketch or snag it. Those are two uh, essential things that you must have. And I'll give you some links to uh, where to get those for free uh, later on in some of the next videos on the tools section. Images, sort of the anatomy of a photo is the quality, obviously, is key. The size has an impact both on the reader experience and the cost, and also the colors. Obviously, you want vibrant, vivid colors that convey exactly what you are uh, promoting, talking about your experience, your expertise. Royalty free is, in my mind, a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, royalty free means that when you use the images, you're not subject to pay additional royalty for their appearance in your, your work or your use. They're, they're not free. There are some exceptions, and I'll give you some links to those in the tool section as well. But basically, you pay a fee. Make sure to read the license uh, about its use. I'm not an attorney, and so you want to read and make sure you're comfortable with uh, what you're clicking and before you use it. And so creating the images, obviously, you can create them. Um, iStock Photo is one of my favorite sites to use. Uh, xsc.hu is great. Um, just Google royalty free images and you'll come up with a variety of options and certainly find uh, some images that will work for your particular book or genre. So the basic formatting, um, keep in mind that the cover image by Amazon convention is inside already and so don't make the first book, first page of your book your cover otherwise when readers download your book they'll have the cover and then a second image of the cover so the first two pages will be images of your cover which is funny. Title page we talked about earlier, clickable table of contents. I like to include a review request, usually something uh, interesting, uh, thought-provoking, fun or cute, depending on the uh, uh, category I'm writing in. Uh, IBM, we'll talk about more in the sales and marketing section. This is a key way to ramp up your sales. Uh, call to action, that's just asking your reader to do something, and we'll cover that a little bit more later. The forward and intro, those are, those are optional. Then the body of your book, again, a review request. Keep in mind that people often jump around in e-books, and so asking them and reminding them again in a polite way at the end of the book that please go ahead and share a review. We'd love to hear from you is uh, fantastic. The IBM, we'll talk about that a little bit more, and, and I'll give you some specific strategies to really ramp up your sales in the, um, so the section covering marketing promotion of your books. And then resources and links. That's just a basic structure of e-books. So why struggle? If, if what I presented here seems confusing and, and doesn't, uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, then you can always outsource it. Elance, Odesk, and Fiverr, these are simple ways that, and places that you can also outsource the formatting of your book, and it doesn't cost all that it needs to, that all that people want to charge you for. What I'm getting at is I saw today someone was charging $249 to format an ebook with a clickable table of contents and to insert a maximum of five images. Well, you can do that literally table of contents in five minutes and I'll show you how in a later video. Or you can outsource it for five bucks. Keep in mind your time is valuable. Would you rather spend time writing or would you rather spend time uh, fiddling with the formatting, previewing, pulling your hair out? The suggestion, again, I'm not an attorney, is an NDA agreement. If you're not familiar with these, these are fairly straightforward. You can find examples on the web or you can write your own or have your attorney write one. Basically, when you outsource your work, the non-disclosure agreement means that people are not going to share your work, not going to uh, reveal what you're launching if you're in some particular market and you're ramping up a launch strategy. This will be crucial as Amazon is very particular about PLR. PLR is private label rights reselling. Amazon hates that. They will shut down your account. And so if you have an NDA agreement in place, Amazon knows exactly when you published and uploaded your book and when you've modified it and changed things. And when someone else tries to publish the same thing, most likely they're going to contact both of you to get to the root of the issue. If you have a signed NDA agreement, this could offer you some protection. Again, I'm not an attorney, but keep in mind that Amazon has very strict rules and you must play by them. The community at Amazon, this is KDP Dashboard here, they're there to help you. Uh, any issue or problem you have that you need solved, you can find a forum, a format, a question, an answer, or post your own. And Amazon is invested in your success. When you succeed, they succeed. Screenshot from Fiverr. For five bucks, you can see here, convert your Word document into Kindle with clickable TOC. Simple return in 24 hours. Here's one for less than 12 hours. The list is endless. Most of these are reputable. You can see how they're ranked and rated. Uh, top rated seller is one of the things to look for on Fiverr. Those people have had, I don't recall the exact number anymore, um, but it's uh, probably at least 50 to 100 sales in a month. And so obviously if they're doing that much work, they're skilled at what they do. 
Elance and Odesk, again, same type of concept. You'll probably pay more here. You can see here, uh, I typed in format ebook, and we have um, individuals 2,205 uh, available to select from. So keep that in mind if you want to outsource it. Uh, let's go back to that a little bit. Um, Elance, they have a, sort of a moderation and a mediation platform. So if you outsource it and it comes back and the format is, is crap and it doesn't work and, and they won't fix it, you, uh, you can uh, get your money back or get the issue resolved. Looking inside the book, this is a, a unique feature that makes uh, ebooks exciting. You can look inside the book just like you would look inside a book on a bookshelf at a bookstore. So the preview is important. <clears throat> Excuse me, the title page table of contents and a call to action. Tell your readers why this book is X, Y, and Z, the unique selling proposition, why your book is different, what problem you'll solve, what pain point you know about and can conquer for them. Tell the readers why they need to read this book. Title page, nothing rocket science here. Basically, title of the book, subtitle if you have one, the name or names of the authors, copyright information. I'm not an attorney, but you can certainly copyright your material. There is some protection just based on the platform of Amazon itself and also uh, web rules in general. I'm not going to go into that in detail here. Ask your attorney or copyright attorney if you're really curious about this or really worried about this. Publisher, completely optional. A cool thing uh, to help establish and build your brand is to include your contact information, where people can find you and connect with you. Your, your Twitter um, following, ask them to follow you, your Facebook site, if you've created a separate Facebook page or brand for a, a business, um, go ahead and, and mention that there and, and give people a call to action. Data and statistics show that if you give people a specific thing to do, they're more than likely to do it. If you just show them a Twitter icon, they might click on it, but they're probably not going to click follow. If you tell them to follow me on Twitter, or follow me on Twitter because X, Y, or Z, they're more likely to do it. And so you can build a following, grow a list if you're trying to mar use uh, book writing for marketing. You can get them onto your blog to become loyal followers or comment or subscribe. You can add free reports or even share a sneak preview of your next book. Follow you on Twitter, subscribe to you on YouTube, friend you, like you on Facebook. Those are all options, so make sure to include a call to action. In the next video, we'll talk more in depth about specific formattings to make your book stand out from the rest. The takeaway point from this first section is always preview your book. Don't upload it and just let it go. Preview your book. That'll save you headaches and hassles. The other thing that will save you from is horrible reviews. When you have five or six one or two star reviews because your formatting is off, it takes a lot of five-star reviews to overcome that. So keep those in mind, and we'll see you on the next video. If you haven't already signed up um, to this membership-only site on KindleIncomeSystem.com, just head over there now. We've got some cool stuff that we'll be giving away, and uh, we'll be keeping you up to date as we add a lot of additional information to the site, a lot of unique marketing strategies to promote your eBooks for massive sales. We'll see you soon.